there, YouTube? I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check it out Skull King from Grandpa Bex Games. This is for two to six players, ages eight plus. It'll take about 30 minutes to play. And in Skull King, this is a trick taking game where you are actually going to be bidding on how many tricks you're going to be getting each round and as you play through the different rounds you're going to get more and more cards but this game isn't just about that unique quirk it's also going to have tons and tons of different cards that will have different special abilities some that will let you surrender hands some that will let you destroy hands if you're playing with the expansion stuff uh pirates that capture things all sorts of craziness going on in this trick taking game but is it good let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think before we do that uh i want to let you know if you want to support the channel please consider supporting the patreon down below uh, it really does help support uh, make the audio video all that stuff better but let's get check out skull king words hard super hard all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of skull king so first and foremost we're gonna handy dandy rule sheet it is one very large page double-sided and it's well done it should have you up and running in no time at all and uh, overall i was a big fan of it they also have another one which is for the expansion cards which, you know, I don't know how I really feel about having two separate rule booklets, one for this, one for the expansion. Part of me kind of likes it, uh, and part of me kind of thinks it's dumb, but either way, that's your mileage may vary kind of thing. Either way, they're both well done as well. So in Skull King, what you're trying to do is you're trying to have the most points after 10 rounds, and this is going to be a trick-taking game with quite a few interesting tricks and turns. So the first one is, on the first round, you're actually only going to get dealt one card, and you're going to start with this big deck of cards right here, and there's a couple different kinds of cards in it. First, we'll start with the little baby cards, the yellow cards, the purple cards, and the green cards. These cards are just your typical suits, your hearts, your spades, your trump, your, you get it, hearts, spades, clubs, whatever. But then there's this guy right here, which is always the trump of these other ones. So if someone led with a purple three and you had a purple, you'd have to play it. Now there are cards in this game that do break the rules, the blue ones and the red ones. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Oh, and Blackbeard, he can do whatever the heck he wants. Uh, but these guys are always going to be stronger than these if you can play them out. But uh, also one thing, you have to follow suit on these as well, even though these are kind of quasi-wilds. So there's a couple different wilds in this game, because the next card you're going to see are the pirates, which the pirates beat everything here, and the pirates are wild. You can play them at any time. So let's say someone plays a yellow three, and you really don't want to get rid of your yellow two. Well, if you have a pirate, you can play the pirate, because the pirate cards... And the Surrender cards break the rules of the game. And the Pirates are the strongest thing in the game, except for uh, the uh, Captain Blackbeard right there. Uh, now, Surrender card, this is an interesting card as well. This card is always going to make you lose, except in a very, very specific circumstance where everybody plays them. But uh, this card is just saying, I do not want to win at all. So these cards can renege. They can do that legally. Next, you're going to have these kind of cards that go all the way up to 14. But you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, if you capture these cards in a trick, you're going to get yourself some bonus points. Then we have the Skull King uh, himself. He's, gonna, he's the big dog. He takes down everybody. You're, you're going to get one if you have him. And he can also score you bonus points if he's able to capture pirates. And this player aid card right here is super useful. And you get a player aid card both for the base game and for the expansion. Overall, really impressed with the components here. Uh, the expansion, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I really want to show you a little bit of how the game works. It's going to add a whole plethora of new things. It's going to add mermaids and uh, tentacles, which will destroy the entire thing, and gold, which is kind of like betting on someone. And, and I, I do like the aspects that it adds to the game, but I'll talk more about that in pros and cons. So let's get to the actual game itself. We've got our first round. Let's just say we're playing a three-player game. And now how it starts is you're going to look at your card. And then you are going to make a bid. So uh, this person's going to go first. They look at their card. They see they have a surrender. They are very, very confident that they can hit the number zero. So you'd mark on here, zero. And they're, they're, they're going to get it. Uh, so how this works is, is the scoring is really quite simple. If you go zero, you're going to get 10 points for each round it is. So if you go zero on round 10, you can score 100 points, which is a huge chunk of points. Whereas the first round, it's only going to give you 10 points. Now, if you do bid a number, so let's say this person looks down at their card, they got an eight yellow and a five yellow. This person is not very bright and they say, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident. I think I can get it. Uh, if they get it correct, you get 20 points for each one you get correct. But here's the catch. You have to hit it right on the nose. This person bids zero. If they actually get one, then they lose. Um, whatever round it is times 10. If this person gets it incorrect, they get negative 10 points for each number they're off. So if they bid three and they get four, they're going to get negative 10, 10 points. If they bid three and they get two, they're going to get negative 10 points. But if they hit three, 
right on the nose, they're going to get all 60 points. Also, once you get to the higher rounds, they have these to help you keep track of what numbers people have bid in front of you. And you're gonna do that over the course of 10 rounds, except in the second round, you're gonna get two cards. In the third round, you're gonna get three cards and so on and so forth until you get to the 10th round where you get 10 cards. You'll add up the score at the end of that and whoever has the most is the winner of Skull King. And that in a nutshell is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Skull King from Grandpa Vex Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, I was not a fan of this at two players. I tried it once and it was just, it was not for me. Um, I did like it at three, four, and six. I played it at all the other different player counts aside from five, and I enjoyed it at all those different player counts. And I, I liked it better at the higher player counts, honestly. I think I'd really like this at five players as well. But I enjoyed it at three players, four players, and six players. It's just two players was just, it didn't have enough interaction for my personal liking. I like all the different cards going on. Another comment that I have in this game is that it is trick-taking. If you're not a big fan of trick-taking games, this one might not be for you. Also, this is a difficult game to wrap your brain around for kids, especially if they're new to the trick-taking genre. Just the concept of trick-taking mixed on top of the fact you have to try and predict how many tricks you're going to take based on what's in your hand is a really high bar for some kids to clear. And I was playing this game with some kids in my class who really dug it. And by the way, I played with adults. I really dug it. But this is the cons. Uh, but... Some of the kids had a lot of trouble bidding. And it's like, why did you bid that low when you had these cards? Or why did you bid this high when you had these cards? And it's kind of hard for them to understand that. So that is something that you are going to want to know if you're planning on playing this with younger kids. That being said, I did play it with eight and nine-year-olds. And they enjoyed the game so a, a lot. Like, a lot. Any other comments I have the game? It is repetitive. You're going to do the same thing over and over again. Uh, I wish the score sheet was a little bit cleaner. Like, I wish... I, you know what? All it needs is I wish the first uh, the first column was the example column. That's what I want. With the first column just to be the example column, and then all the other ones to be just blanks. But it's a minor nitpick, and honestly, you don't even need to fill out all the information in there. Uh, I don't have too many cons in this game. Moving on to the pros, I thought Skull King was great, and I was very pleasantly surprised with Skull King, as you probably might be right now, because... I, you know, I always like to be honest in this channel, and I got these games at Gen Con, and I went up to Grandpa Beck's booth, and I'd never heard of them, and I was looking at their games, I was like, oh, these look kind of interesting, and he was like, they're the number one rated games on Amazon, and he was giving me the spiel about how it's great for families and stuff, and I was like, I don't know about this, this, this kind of reeks of not being great. Like, I was expecting, like, Uno Plus, but still not something that I was really going to enjoy that much. And I've been very pleasantly surprised with the two Grandpa Bix games that are viewed so far, the Bears and the Bees, whatever, uh, Skull King. And, uh, yeah, this is this is a great trick-taking game for adults. This is a great trick-taking game for kids. This is a great trick-taking game for families. Uh, and I like the fact that they included all those extra cards because those really do spice things up. They spice things up exponentially. And that's the, the one con that I do want to mention is that I think, I think once you get all the cards in there, it can be a lot to keep track of. So that's one more con I want to mention, especially if you're playing with kids who don't like to look at player reference cards, which is gone. I don't understand why kids don't like player reference cards. At least not the kids in my class. Um, there's a lot to remember and a lot of what the cards do and you can easily forget. But moving on to the pros, if you're an adult, I think you're really going to like playing with that expansion, especially if you like trick-taking games. It accommodates high player counts really well. And uh, overall, you know, small compact box, easy rules, nice quality. I think this is a great trick-taking game. This is a game that I'm going to keep, not just for my classroom, but for myself personally. I think this is a great little light filler trick-taking game and one that I think should definitely get a little bit more notice. You know, it's uh, Grandpa Bex Games, which I think when you see that, you might maybe maybe kind of poo-poo it a little bit if you're more into the hobby, but uh, solid trick-taking game. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Go support the channel. Click on the little Amazon Associates link down below. Buy anything on Amazon. Throw us a couple of pennies by me. It really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know what was the most memorable thing about your grandpa or grandpas. For me personally, uh, from my grandpa my dad's side, he was, uh, he was, uh, was it Green Beret? I think it was. He was really hardcore military. Something. He was very high up in the, he wasn't high up in the military, but he had a military position that was very difficult and very strenuous. Uh, something like that. So that was what I really remember about my grandpa. That, and he was a Cubs fan. He used to smoke like a chimney and drink beer all the time. And then my other grandpa, who's still alive, is just the most amazing grandpa ever. And he's like a grandpa to my son as well. But the thing about him is he rebuilt an entire house. Like, he's worked his entire life, and he can fix 
everything. Like, everything. You know how people say, I got a guy? My grandpa is that guy. Pretty much everybody in the neighborhood. With If you live within, like, a three-house radius. So house, 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 house. My grandpa has probably helped them out in one way, shape, or form. Even if they didn't ask for it. He will just go around. I've seen him do this before when I was a kid. He would go around and he would mow everybody's grass. He would mow everybody's grass for the whole neighborhood. Like, I'm not I'm not joking here, like 10 to 12. Now, it was a riding lawnmower, so obviously it wasn't like he was out there slaving on it. But still, I mean, that's, that's nuts. But my grandpa, he was, oh, I'm going to miss him. I miss him a lot. Now I'm thinking about my grandpa and I'm sad. Thanks, Grandpa Beck. Look <laughs> at the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.